Welcome to our video series, What CEOs Learn from Board Roles. Today, we are delighted to have with us Frank Mastio, CEO of NBW, the third biggest electric utility company in Germany and non-executive director of Alstom, a French uh, multinational rolling stock manufacturer operating worldwide in rail transport markets. Frank, welcome and thank you for taking the time to be with us. You joined the board of Alstom last year when you had been CEO of ENBW for nearly nine years. How do you feel that this particular NED role benefited your day job as CEO? Uh, hello, Nicholas. Uh, good to see you again and appreciate the invitation for this conversation. Um, let me start by saying uh, the, the plan was not necessarily taking the role to take immediate feedback into my operational role, but you're right, there is an immediate benefit by simply getting a different perspective of the conversation at the board level, particularly. As a CEO, you are day by day in the position to have something to discuss with your board. And you can always do your best effort in trying to anticipate what the question could be, the concern could be, the excitement could be, the worry could be, the lack of understanding could be, and switching the role, so to say, gives you a certain flavor of how a non-exec enters a debate. For example, um, recognizing the fact that you may not be familiar with the, with the detail, but you're confronted with the data at a certain scale, at a certain depth, in a certain time frame. So overall, the benefit was from day one being in that other role and, and getting clearer on how this feels, set aside all the dynamics, being in a, in a board of, of superior people uh, in, in each of their roles. Interesting. And um, I also think there are two specific things about this uh, board role. Number one, it's a French boardroom. So it's a one tier board structure differently than in Germany, where we have uh, two uh, tier structures. And secondly, I think so far, I would guess that you have just had only virtual meetings. This is a rich question. Uh, so, so I take it one by one. The, the, the first difference is the one tier model. So the CEO, Henri uh, Poupard Lafarge, is in, his, in, a, in an identical accountability, also the chairman which creates different dynamics, different accountabilities, and is a, is a formal difference in the governance model. I have to say so far in the way conversations went, I didn't catch a difference in the dynamics of the conversation related to what I've seen at the two-tier model in my company. But I'm sure over time, differences may appear more prominently but the dynamics were pretty much similar. And this may have to do with the style of, of, of the CEO, et cetera. So I can't, I can't spot uh, an immediate complete difference. Um, the second point about the limitations doing this so far indeed, primarily via video conference, the conversation itself that we had would not pose any different perspective to what we all in these days experience. I mean, there's the genuine difference between a video conference and the physical interaction. However, what made it a little bit more difficult for me personally was as part of an onboarding process, it's obvious that doing this simply via video con limits enormously the speed with which you could uh, sort of uh, spot flavors in the room in a sense of the, the, how people feel. It's, it's not as easy to say, well, welcome, my name is Frank. And it, across the table normally sits a person live and, and human beings are sort of conditioned in making use of that. Human, human beings are not conditioned per se in a, in a sense of uh, evolution. 
to have a first encounter via a video screen. I'm sure that was not in the plan of the guy up there. Um, so that made it a little bit more challenging, I must say. Thank you. Um, on a different topic, what are both the benefits and the challenges of having a non-executive directorship in a different industry to your executive role? I mean, at the heart of my interest was in fact the learning experience per se. I mean, there was a mutual interest. Obviously the company saw some value adding me to the board with respect to experience, background, understanding, blah, 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 lots of things. Um, this, from my, from, from my end, there was one concrete touch point when it comes to content, which was mobility. We do more mobility than ever in the sense of electric mobility. And obviously the, the sustainability aspect of that transcends far beyond the energy industry. So I was interested to learn how does a mobility company, which in fact also in these days is, look at mobility in the future from a sustainability perspective. That's a very narrow, but tangible um, sort of uh, cross read from the perspective of other factors that matters were in fact um, the international element of being in a French context. Uh, I had done a lot of international roles in my prior career. The degree which, with which I can do it in the current role is a little bit limited because we have a strong German focus. So I had sort of refreshed my memory in, in moving uh, comfortably at, the, at an international level. Thirdly, uh, we have done, we have recently entered France as an important market for us for the renewables business. That was not an, a crucial factor, but was another factor where I could see understanding the people a little better, the French society, the French economy, the French fabrics works as everybody probably knows entirely different from a German system. And I was actually quite curious how it feels in 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 day-to-day -day terms when it comes to a board so there were a plenty of factors that made this this opportunity for me a wouldn't say no-brainer but it was a, a there was strong reasons to say yes to this offer interesting so let's talk about d and i diversity and inclusion which i know is very high on your agenda as ceo what are the differences of how DNI is tackled in your experience as CEO at uh, ENBW compared to your board role? I wouldn't say that there was a uh, a completely new insight. I would say it would re what I've experienced so far in like a dozen interactions um, or something like that. Um, it, it reinforced one more time the value of having that diverse composition. In, in fact, Alstom makes quite an effort to create that diversity, not just gender, but also uh, the cultural, the, the uh, nation nationalities that come together. Uh, so there's quite a wide array of voices in the room, plus the heritage of the faculties where these people come from. Here's a banker, here's an energy person, he is a compliance lawyer. He is somebody who runs an airport in Asia, sort of thing, you know. And and that in itself creates a a very balanced conversation, where um, you could argue companies like Alstom, as much as an energy company, they sort of they they have something very fundamental for their own economy. You know, the energy for a country the rail tracks for a country is something like a nugget, like mm -hmm. a treasury. And you could argue, well, there's, I'm sure a case where you have a lot of French people sitting around the table discussing this. Alstom does the opposite in a good way. They open up the debate, they look for um, other voices. And it has a lot to do with the fact that the company has a global footprint. And that's almost reflected by the board composition. So the reinforcement of how important that is, how different voices pull the conversation a little bit and, and road test an argument and 
you know, kicking against the tires and seeing whether this is right or wrong. Plus, I must say with, with, a, with, a, with a certain delight, the group has a very direct way of expressing voices. Mm -hmm. They don't sugarcoat, they don't muck around, they just say yes or no, and this is my view. There's something nice about the French culture in that sense, even if it is a broad global presence around the table. Right. So I take it uh, from that, Frank, that all in all, it has been the right decision to take an external board seat, although it's time consuming, what you said? Yes, it is always a conscious choice to make whether you can fit it into the accountabilities. And this is not just a statement around calendar. This is more about attention. You have time to consider things. This is not just a tech technical, operational, yes, no kind of thing. You want to be involved in strategy. In this particular case, I came into the in, into this actually quite a unique situation where the company acquired another huge competitor, almost doubling size in one go, which was a historical opportunity for me to watch this sort of process. So in that sense, it is time consuming. It is, it's, you, you have to be up to uh, reading material, getting involved, inter interacting. There is committees around the board where I'm part of such committee and that committee. This is not to be taken lightly, at least in my personal opinion. And it's a judgment to make. Is this in, in, uh, in line with the, the capacity that you as a person have to bring, to get, to, to get this going? Uh, and I've answered this with a yes. Um, otherwise, I wouldn't have taken that role. I think my point is showing responsibility and not just taking such a role lightly, both for the company you work for and for the company you want to uh, interact with more than before is, is an important and conscious step to take. And I didn't regret it a minute. It is a good move. Uh, it has been valuable for me um, beyond the, the content, the people the personalities is worthwhile uh, to consider doing such a role. Thank you, um, Frank, very much for your time and these insights and all the best for you and both roles. See you personally soon that we don't only have to do that on a virtual basis, hopefully.